So we could be getting a nest ditto. All right, where we have the uh, best Falco in New York City, arguably, probably, honestly. All right, so starting off on town, let's see what happens. So, you know, like we saw before, uh, like Slink seemed to be in some pretty dominant control in his last set. Uh, and that's kind of the, what you'll see in the nature of like how Belmont plays, because like it's really when he gets going, he really gets going. But uh, Tilde able Whoa. to get take a little hey, peek in. Hey Gretch, how you doing? Hey, Is there a way that? Uh... Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, it just came in time to catch some Tilde Falco play yeah. against uh, Slink, who just got it over Z minus. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's for exactly sure. Exactly correct. And this the is same matchup actually. On the start of game one too. You notice Devin that uh, Tilde didn't like reflect the fire. You know, he was right in front of it. It's because he was like all it really does is expose him. Mm -hmm. so he knew that if he just just jumped over it, he would be fine. Especially because like Axe has so much mm -hmm. startup. Yeah, take advantage of the verticality that Falco has access to. He such, has such high jumps that you're just like, oh wow, nice aim, dummy. I'm all the way yeah, over yep. here. The biggest second, the biggest anything, jumps in the game. Is it the tallest? Yeah, he has the tallest first and second jump in the game. He's a bird. Oh, good. He is a bird. Yeah. <laughs> he does have the wing. And it really is that reflector on Falco is such a commitment relative to something like Fox or Wolf. Um, even though the horizontal is kind of nice to have the hitbox out there, it's not as practical as dealing with projectiles. So jumping over is the best option. I well, really right like there, the use of the, of the Fire Falco specifically to get out of, of the uh, Holy Water that he did earlier. Uh, I wonder if we'll see a challenge on that, because that does keep Tilde in place for a little bit there. Something I also want to really point out about the way Tilde's playing is that he's air dodging at the points where Axe would be most effective and throw out when he's near Belmont. Mm -hmm. You're talking at the uh, like anti-air angles when he's uh, diagonal uh, up in front of exactly. him. Exactly. Yep. That's always when he when uh when Tilde's air dodging. Mm -hmm. When he's uh, when he's trying to land anywhere near uh, Slank right now. Another thing about that is that uh, Belmonts have, have kind of narrowish hitboxes. They're very good, but they only have so many timings that they can mix up for if they're trying to snipe you out of the air. Um, so it kind of you need to like have a bit of a read on Tilde to uh, take the air dodge, and by that point you might just be letting him in with a hitbox for free. Oh, it's a difficult call to make as the Belmont on defense. You can see like Slink is playing like super reserved right now, but eventually like Falco is gonna get that kill if he's, if he's playing safely enough. Mm -hmm. All right. That was a nicely spaced axe. Uh, that was yeah. a really good punish on the re-grab from Slink. Honestly, it's very, very hard to avoid getting holy watered at the ledge at some point during a set. It's probably going to happen at least once. I like the chase with the cross. All right, so they're finally getting a good start. Good use of laser. If he had jumped out, if he had jumped immediately out of hit stun, that would have been the stock. Mm-hmm. It's like luckily Very good place uh, to reserving it. It's definitely a uh, a not sung enough virtue of characters like Belmont for holding your jump as long as you possibly can, unless you absolutely need to use it for situations like this. And I like how he's checking because he knows that Falco has such the, uh, a high jump arc. He's constantly checking with axes, even though it's a bit of a slow option, and he could go for something like holy water on the ground. Axe is better for covering in the air. Oh boy! No, you don't want to get until up into they, that. And until they was forced off of the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, oh, I thought. I thought he was going to make a run for it because he'd gotten past Dilde and had uh, the whole screen to him, but he stuck around a little too long, ate the back for his troubles. That so actually seems like. Yeah. A little bit on the back foot, but the thing is, is that he's constantly putting pressure down. Like, uh, Belmont, if he doesn't have setups current. 
currently out, it's kind of difficult to keep people, especially someone as fast as Falco, off of him. Like, he's just trying this to get his projectiles set up. Look at that. All right, oh, I no, appreciate that. No, no, no. That was the second jump, so it's over. Mm -hmm. Good Those catch. Yano Slinka overextending on getting off the ledge like that. He really wanted to get back onto the stage, and he uh, he just got he just ate like a laser to the leg. Mm -hmm. And you can see he's like he's trying to find time to put the, these projectiles out because Belmont without projectiles only has so many tools to deal with people getting in his face. Like he's trying to just make space, throw a cross or something, but he wasn't given the space for it until he was on him at all times. You know, like, Fair feels, like, super quick when you're in the middle of a match, but, like, it is actually kind of slow. It has a bit of startup. It is not a good get off the game tool. I love mm -hmm. this, uh, that ledge trap right there on the re-grab was perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, checkmate situation, more or less. And this is another one. We're just like, yep, uh, you don't have any options. You can try re-grabbing, but, uh, that's not going to end well for you, bud. The only thing that's what the they thing could have feasibly is... done was done ledge release, jump up, reflector, and that would have like gotten rid of both of the options. So that's the kind of thing that you really have to guess that the Belmont is going for those things. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, when you'd seen him neutral get up into the holy water there, despite the fact that um, neutral get up into holy water is on paper, oh man, why would you do it? You do have to rep that sometimes. Because if you go for ledge jump, Belmont can snipe you out of the air. Ledge roll uh, can be reacted to, even online, although it's very difficult sometimes. But uh, going into... I love that use of the laser, by the way, the computer around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, uh, Belmont, like, Belmont still needs to set up their projectiles. So that's something that, like, a lot of people don't really appreciate that much, is that they need to set up the projectiles and to get into a position where they're trying to stop you from getting closer. And if you use lasers like that to drift in and out and change your momentum completely, that can be really good for the matchup, especially when you play a character like Falco, who has a reflector that covers so much space, but has a lot of confidence to it. Mm hmm absolutely and he's actually uh, he's going in a little bit more now but at the beginning of the match we saw him kind of like play things out a little bit with the laser just sort of playing more across from the stage actually giving him the space where he could potentially set up um and i guess sort of just pestering him sort of seeing what his options and replies would be that was yes that could have been potentially punished on the side view but he gets away with it you don't want to catch those axes uh, I think... No, he does still have his jump. Very nice. Oh, yeah, good on the holy grab. water. Yes. That's this him. basically removes a tool Gordon. from uh, Rector's kit, but the problem is if you're holding onto it, you cannot use aerials! Mm-hmm. But oh, at the, nice. uh, juggling with that. Oh, catches him back when he lands. Waits for the air okay. dodge. Very nice. See up tilt to the imagination. Back of the And then he got packed for his troubles. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're both inside of that. Well. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is that if you uh, hit Holy Water on shield, it becomes neutral, and it can hit both parties. Um, yeah. So what had happened there is that Richter could not act. But uh, he could have potentially gotten something on the tail end of that. Up B comes to mind immediately because it's fast, but it's hard to say. Boy, I like the double again, jump like... axe mix up. So they're just trying to figure out a way to get past uh, projectiles. It's really tough. Uh, Kalos does have the upside of having a wall, which makes things a little bit easier for Falco recovering. Mm -hmm. But like that doesn't change the fact that he's just got to. Ooh, what a good use of the uh, of the tether. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it looked like that was an intentional thing because that seemed like a bit of an early whip timing, but a good way to get him off and bounce him off the wall and save some space for himself. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% sure that that was intentional. I, I'm surprised actually that that axe did not reach uh, Richter, all things considered. Like maybe uh, Tilly just got it kind of late. Uh, maybe. Uh, do the axes disappear before they hit the bottom blast zone? My understanding was that they just sort of lasted until they hit a ground or went off stage, but I'm not certain on that. 
Yeah, so the issue with the axes is that when they're reflected, their arc is determined by what point they got reflected at. Oh, I see. Yeah, so if they're if it's done like super late, it's gonna be mostly vertical heart, uh, momentum, and if it's done too early, it's gonna be mostly horizontal, at least relative to the uh, to the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he just fell on his head. Right, Actually, I do want to point sick... uh, just a... ah, go with the blast zone cancel into his final stock. Um, I did want to point out that you will see some uh, different spacings on the holy water at ledge. Uh, you'll see the one right next to the ledge that catches these neutral getups handily, but it's actually a pretty common mix-up for uh, Belmonts to throw it a bit shorter than that to catch rollins because that's such like a tempting option to deal with uh, neutral getup spacing. So that's a mix-up in and of itself that's difficult to react to at the best of times. Barry jumped out of there because of the Rekka. Mm -hmm. Slink not in a great position uh, till they finally getting some big hits, but he could get turned. Never oh. mind. <laughs> um, you ever just like, you ever just get kicked in the back of the skull and you just decide to embrace oblivion? Because that's definitely what just happened to Slink. Obama had had to have a meeting with Konami, I guess. Something about a new pachinko machine, but you know that's his business, not ours. With sexy vampires. Maybe. My favorite. Oh. <laughs> To be fair, I, I don't blame him for not getting the uh, guy on that. That was definitely no, a quick hit. You know, Falco's back here is the kind of thing you have to like be ready to DI at all times, especially if Falco's in the air near you. Because mm -hmm. Falco has like really good air mobility, like, all things considered. And he also, like, that back air is pretty much instantaneous. I, I don't know, like, what. Not on the reactable end. Yeah, no, definitely not. I'm not 100% sure. Like, what was he doing? Like, what was he doing when he got when he got kicked in the back of the head? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. He was a really good reflector. That was great. Yeah, that was fun. Totally having a little fun with it. Like, yeah, I'm kind of good at video games. I'm pretty nice. Yeah, and that ba this basically spelled his death because he gave up stage control. That's also a tough call, too, is because when the opponent comes down with the invincibility, do you want to try holding your ground, potentially risk getting hit with an invincible mix-up, or do you want to go for the ledge, have some invincibility of your own, but give up all of your stage control? <laughs> Excuse me. 